Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Inkscape. Now, I talked about this a couple of weeks back when the release candidate was launched. Well, we're following it up. Inkscape 1.0 is finally here, and this is a project that started in 2003. So we're looking at 17 years to get to the point of being a 1.0 release, and three years specifically on this version. So let's jump in, take a look at what we've got going on here. Then we'll jump back on over to the major website. We'll look at some of the release notes and so on, but let's start hands-on with Inkscape. So here you can see Inkscape. This is the, uh, the title screen for the 1.0. Um, quite a bit went on here. Uh, so we've got some uh, definite improvements that, that everyone are going to like. So you've got things in here like high DPI support. You've got a new windowing toolkit here. Uh, so these are all using GTK3, the newest version. Um, we've got um, better support on Mac OS. So we've got native application support there. Uh, we've got new uh, tools here for uh, path effects. So this is completely reorganized now. We've got things like um, you know, searchable uh, for the path effects here. We can toggle on experimental or not. Uh, so a nice new UI there for selecting path effects. I'd like to see the uh, filter uh, interface get a bit of a facelift. It's always been a bit ugly in my opinion, but generally the performance of Inkscape are just improved across the board. So um, you should see a nicer thing here. Now there are still some flaws. So for example, if I zoom on Windows at least, the performance is still a little cruddy, uh, especially if I contrast that to the exact same file in Affinity. So I would love to see that performance get improved for sure. It, it is definitely better, and I am noticing that the biggest flaws do to be around. So if I if I pan around, it's not too bad. It's zooming in and out for some reason. The performance has never been flawless, but still, uh, it's definitely improved over previous versions, and it is definitely workable now. And on top of that, UI level, a couple of things have changed that are going to be uh, really starting off very useful to a lot of people. We'll look at those right away. So we now have an x-ray mode. So this hovers under my cursor, and as you can see the underlying wireframe of your graphic. It makes it a lot easier to go in and fine-tune selections. Uh, and then on top of that, if you want something a bit more um, global, I guess we could say, we can turn off x-ray mode and instead go to split view mode. And this allows you to toggle between fully rendered and not. Although if you bring it to the end, uh, it, it seems to go away. I guess that's one way of turning it off. All right, so I won't go all the way to the end. I guess that makes sense. That's actually a nice shortcut to turn it off, but it gives you the ability to, to fold between the fully rendered version and the underlying wireframe in an interactive manner. One of those things I talked about when the release candidate video was done, I still find this a little strange. There is the ability to go up and down, but I, I don't know why you would ever use that. It also seems to jump to the edges really quickly, which I'm finding irritating. We also have the ability to rotate the canvases now. We've got some new mirroring tools, et cetera. So there's some really nice new features in that regard. But one thing I know a lot of people are going to like so if I come in here, we go into preferences, we've got theming support. Now you've always had theming support, but it required you to bring in outside boxes. The user interface was a little crap for doing it. Now you can just basically come in here, go to interface themes, and we've got a bit more control over things. So we can picture the GTK theme to use. So say I wanna go over the high contrast, theme. I can do that there. I know some of you people are obsessed with dark themes. So yep, there is that option as well. So we can switch over to a dark theme and we can also switch out the icon sets if we were using. So let's go here. So let's go back to that guy right there. Use a dark theme on or off. So if dark themes is your theme, uh, you've got that ability here. We've also got the ability to again, switch out the icon sets to make it look, um, you know, ideal to what you like. We've also got the ability to find those icon sets, which is also very nice uh, because it works, again, much better with high DPI monitors. It used to be in the past, Inkscape 9.2 on a 4K monitor was just useless, uh, absolutely and utterly useless to use earlier versions of it. So 1.0 is definitely much more usable on high resolution displays. So across the board, so we've got some really nice new improvements here, and we're only kind of scratching the surface of what's in this release. I'm gonna head over now. This is the uh, Inkscape website. This is the blog announcing the 1.0 release. It is available at inkscape.org. I will, of course, link that in the linked article down below. Kind of goes over some of what the new stuff here is. Uh, we've covered off a lot of it right now. High DPI support, new and improved live path effects. Uh, now there's a native macOS app, so you should get better performance if you are in the world of macOS. Um, right now, the latest editions are available for Linux and Windows and macOS, but the macOS version is labeled as a preview. Um, the 1.0 version should deliver smoother, higher performance experience on Linux and Windows and better system integration with no more exports on Mac OS. So should just be better across the board. But if you are working in Mac land, do be aware you are going to be marked as preview for now. Um, 
we saw some of this stuff already. The new bells and whistles, such as the new toolbox for live path effects. You can see it right here. Also got performance improvements in there. Canvas flexibility improvements here. So I mentioned earlier on, you can now rotate the canvas. You can also mirror it. We saw the X-ray and split views in action. Uh, there's also a new power pencil mode. The pencil tool has pressure sensitive widths. Uh, so basically, if you're doing inking, you're going to probably like it a lot better because of the power pencil. Um, new path effects that will appear to appeal to the artistic user include offset power clip and power mask um duplicate guides corner and hairlines for technical drawings uh fillet and chamfering uh even rounding or blunting of corners by a specified radius with the corners live path effect you can see it in action right here uh we've got pdf export text and document fixes and so on uh so a lot of plumbing behind the scenes type stuff again the theming stuff is definitely nice to see there so you've got uh Plenty of tinkering, menu, and toolbars to page sizes and custom font directories. Uh, there's a lot. Choose from your installed themes to give Inkscape a dark or bright interface, and then select one of the available icon sets. Uh, we saw that in action earlier on. Uh, of course, you can also drop your own theme in at a file system level, uh, but now having this nice user interface for dealing with that stuff is also a nice thing. Another thing here, and this one is actually a very important warning, um, the extension system was uh, redone behind the scenes. You now use Python 3. However, this has broke a ton of existing extensions just one of those things to be aware of if you use inkscape with extensions expect them to be broken and expect them to be broken for some time to come because they broke a ton of things it's just nature of the beast there it's nothing you know against inkscape but moving forward the apis have changed so extension makers are going to have to update uh, so that those new extensions will work in 1.0 so that is definitely one of the negatives there um but yeah, that is it. They've done their own launch also of what uh, is new to expect in Inkscape. Now, one thing to be aware of, and I just head on over there right now, there is the download link. So you can download it right here, available for Linux, Windows, Mac OS. Uh, but my challenge was when I went into Windows, I could not get any of the 64-bit. None of these three actually did anything. They, they, they just spun there and timed out. So I'm actually demonstrating the 32-bit version today because that was the only one I could download today. I'm assuming this is an, you know, Today, it literally just launched. So I imagine over time, the download servers will get going or maybe the links were bad. I don't know what was going on there. But if you're trying to download this guy for Windows and for some reason, the 64-bit versions keep timing out for you, the 32-bit versions do seem to work. Just it's something I ran into. Also, Inkscape is completely open source. The source code is up on GitLab. I believe it is under the LGBLv2 license, but I might be a little bit wrong there. Um, but it is an open source project, so if you wanted to contribute towards it, I, I am sure they would be happy to have your work. Uh, so once again, that is Inkscape 1.0 was released in finality today, three years in development for this particular version, and something like 17 years from the point that Inkscape launched to the point that we hit this 1.0 release. Um, and you know what? They're moving a lot of things in the right direction. If I'm going to be negative about the things that I don't use Inkscape because of, their text tools are a little frustrating. Uh, the performance, it, it needs especially for zooming, they need to do something here. This is being run on a good machine. And then again, some of the user interface stuff, especially the, um, the filters, UI stuff, it definitely could use some love. But again, across the board, it's a tool that does keep on improving. And it took a big step forward with this 1.0 release. So if you haven't checked out Inkscape in a very long time and you are looking for a vector graphics space application, especially something that is cross-platform and open source, Inkscape may be an ideal candidate for you. It's come a long way. Uh, and hopefully it will continue to go a long way as we head into the future. So let me know what you think. Do you, do you like Inkscape? Or were there some features or functionality that was missing or, you know, was the performance turn off? Or is there any reason why you haven't checked out in the past that you may check it out again in the future? Or if you're not using Inkscape, but you are into vector graphics, what are you using? Are you using something like Illustrator or Affinity Designer or, um, you know, uh, I guess there's Gravit, a few other options out there. Let me know what you're using. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. And congratulations and happy birthday, Inkscape. Hell of a milestone. And uh, hopefully we hit 2.0 before too long. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.